episode 603. Earlier this month, for our March Slow Flowers member meetup, we invited several members who incorporate what I like to call slow pottery into their floral enterprises. What is slow pottery? I originally wrote about slow pottery in our 2018 Slow Flowers Floral Insights and Industry Forecast, inspired by a New York Times article entitled, Why Handmade Ceramics Are Hot. The story noted, handcrafted small batch ceramics are everywhere these days. And the article continued that the rejection of factory produced sameness in dinnerware and vases reflected a desire to get back to something more essential, the handmade. In the mass market sea of sameness, it feels timely and exciting to track the creative work of floral artists and those they collaborate with to make one-of-a-kind vessels for their flowers. Our meetup featured several creatives who share their collections while also discussing sustainability, supply chain issues, and a desire among Slow Flowers members to celebrate artisan pieces rather than throw away vases. This was a great meeting. We heard from Kelsey Ruland of Foxbound Flowers, Katie Tolson of Seed on Hudson, Holly Lukasevich of District 2 Floral Studio, along with ceramic artist Anna Stoisich, Andy Ziegler of Three Sepals, and Sarah Nayani of Grow Girl Seattle. So we recorded this session and I want to share it with you today. You'll enjoy meeting all of these talented members as they share their vases, their flowers, and discuss collaborations between clay and blooms. Let's jump right in and get started. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, Welcome to the uh, March Slow Flowers member meetup. It's uh, what a beautiful day out. It's a Friday. I'm really inspired to uh, get out in my garden this weekend. I hope For those of you who aren't buried in snow, that you're going to do the same thing. Um, I'm Deborah Prinzing, founder of the Slow Flower Society. And we have, for those of you who are new, we have a monthly meetup the second Friday of every month. We started this during COVID and it's just been a really positive way to connect with fellow Slow Flowers practitioners around the country, flower farmers, growers, and florists and designers and creatives. So we have a huge audience today, and I'm really excited. Uh, So we're going to go pretty swiftly. We have five special guests, actually six, uh, because we have a a duo, a a potter and a florist together, Um, but we'll have five 10-minute convos. And so um, we are welcome to put your questions in the chat, and Tonali and Nisha and I will keep our eye on it. Nisha's going to be taking down names uh, for the drawing. We have two vases that are being donated, that are donated, and that will be given away. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And uh, let's just go in, right in and get started. I'll give you a little background uh, just for fun. I'm going to um, post a um, a link here uh, that you can look at. Um, I'll put it in the chat. But A few years ago, I guess in 2015, there was an article that really caught my attention in the New York Times called Why Handmade Ceramics Are White Hot. And uh, this whole story was about handcrafted small batch ceramics, how they're really uh, resonating with consumers, but also creatives of all uh, disciplines that people were doing collaborations um, in the food space in the home decor space, in the fashion space, and of course in florals. And it led me to um, declare for our 2018 Slow Flowers uh, forecast that slow pottery was a an, an insight and a kind of a happening trend that we all should keep an eye on. And obviously uh, many people have been doing pottery for decades, but all of a sudden it kind of uh, resonated. And as soon after that story came out, um, and I'll put it in the link in a second, um, there was another story story that came out in the New York Times also with the headline was pottery is the new Pilates. And how funny that that all was sort of um, happening before COVID. And then I think with COVID, people started to return to their craft or be, just be more intentional about creative, creating things, being makers. And then we have the supply chain issues and the um, you know shortages of uh, COVID that a lot of florists found with not being able to source vases and people starting to question, throw away consumables. And all of a sudden, pottery has such a relevance in our profession. And so I thought it would be fun to invite some of our members who are 
doing really creative things, and it's a full range uh, to have you meet them. So I'm going to jump right in and have you first meet Kelsey Ruland of Foxbound Flowers. And Kelsey was a guest on the Slow Flowers uh, podcast last year. I got to visit her studio in Eugene, Oregon. And um, hi, Kelsey. Me. Oh, come on. Yeah, you're, yeah, we hear you. We go. hear you. Hi, it's so good to see you again. Uh, yeah, it's good to see you too. Well, uh, some some of us have seen the photos that you shared of your pottery um, on social media this week because Nisha shared some of those. So why don't you just jump right in? We have 10 minutes to talk about your business and you, you are a florist. You had a retail shop uh, in, was it South Dakota? North Dakota, yeah. Yeah, and then you moved to Eugene, Oregon, and you started the a, kind of a, a retail business, but it's it's uh, online, and so people don't necessarily walk into your shop. But uh, talk a little bit about how that uh, expanded to include pottery, and and tell us uh, what you're doing now. Um. Yeah. So I, when I started Fox on Flowers, I wanted to build in sustainability from the get go. Um, so all of that would just be second nature and it would just be part of the business. Um, and I started looking at, um, uh, so I'm sourcing product responsibly, but then I realized, okay, well, I have to think about where I'm sourcing my vases from. Um, and so many vases come from China. I was trying to find um, vases that were made in the U.S., um, anything I could that just wasn't shipped from, or, from across the globe. Um, and it turns out there's not a whole lot, um, as some of the other florists would probably um, would know too. There's not a whole lot of options. So once I narrowed it down to, okay, these are my options of vases that are made in the USA, um, I was kind of disappointed with what was available. And so, um, uh, Eugene is a community of artists, and so I was lucky enough to stumble upon some pottery classes. Um, and there's this, um, there's kind of like co-ops or like a like a pottery studio that you can get a subscription to. Um, and so I just started kind of doing that for fun, and then realized like, hey, this might be a good way um, to make vases if I can't source the vases I want I'll just make them so <laughs> I started taking a couple pottery classes and and that's kind of how I got started and I just interrupt and say you are a maker in many ways not just in pottery the things that you just decide how to MacGyver and hack hack together blow my mind <laughs> so you're making wooden containers as well for your for your flowers I am. This is also a town of a lot of fences. And so fences are constantly being torn down and put up. So uh, my husband and I, okay, mostly my husband, he does most of the carpentry work, but <laughs> uh, figured out how to reuse these fence, cedar fence planks and make them into wooden boxes. And um, so the, the wood is free. People are just like, come and get it, take it. I don't want it. Um, so we're doing that. And then I also recently started making cement bases and pots as well. Well, show us what you've got there. Um, I You have sort of your signature color palette, don't you? I do. Okay, so my this is my most basic base. And you can see um, it. I started with a cylinder because I wanted just a really simple and clean cylinder. Um, and I found out through my own experience that a cylinder is a really unforgiving shape to make. <laughs> so it's a lot harder than I thought it would be, but it seems that people don't really mind the flaws. They don't mind that it's perfect, that it's uneven. Imperfect, um, yeah. So people really like that. So this is kind of like my classic go-to. Uh, I make a lot of bright. I can put a lot of things in those and they add a lot of punch and they add a lot of color. Um, and people seem to really like them. So that is kind of my go-to base. I also have been experimenting with different colors in um, glossy and blue. Um, I experimented with writing 
I thought that was really fabulous for a gift, a gift uh, bouquet. I love yeah. that. And then w- one that I recently experimented with that I'm going to try out is kind of a footed vase. Um, and it's got some texture to it. So oh, wow. yeah, I'm just, I'm starting. So I'm starting with the classic, the teal cylinder, and then I'm just going to try to grow it from there. Um, these are hand built, right? You're not on a wheel. Is that correct? Right. I started on the wheel. I, that's how I thought, like, I'll just start throwing things on a wheel. How hard can it be? <laughs> it's really hard. I, I realized I, it would take me a lifetime to get good at that. So then I start, so now I'm just doing hand building. And so, um, the, the vases are like roughly what, six inches in di- diameter or what's your preferred size? Um, they're about four and a half. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of a, a basic, um, everyday bouquet size that you would, you would have purchased a vase about that size for one of your, one of your yeah. standard, standard basic, uh, vase, uh, arrangements. Yeah. They're pretty versatile. I would say you can put anywhere from like a 50 to $125 arrangement in there pretty easily. Um, and I do have some slightly larger ones if I want to, um, make larger book base too. Yeah. Can uh, you talk a little bit about pricing? Are you comfortable talking about how you build that custom-made vase into the price of the arrangement? Do people have a choice to add on a vase? Yeah, I, I let people choose um, the ceramic vase if they want. If they don't want that one, uh, because it does add quite a bit to the price point, then they can just choose a glass vase. So um, people often do choose the glass face. Um, I, I don't know. It's kind of 50, 50, about half of them choose the pottery and half of them choose the glass face. So, um, I, I would be interested in hearing from other people how exactly they price them. I, since I'm not a potter, that's, um, you know, this is like a second, a side project to me. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard to, for me to figure out how to price them. So, um, that is, that has, that I'm still figuring that out. Yeah. Can give it, tell us what you're charging now for that, like that, that basic teal four and a half inch. Um, this one, I usually would add on 20. Um, so I think I personally think they're still really flawed and they're really rough. Um, so I charge 20, but I don't, I don't have a lot to compare it to either. So I, you know, I don't know any other florists who are doing this. Um, so I have no idea. Yeah. How close Um, I am to, well, I'd be interested in hearing from the other, especially the professional potters who are joining us today. My feeling is that is a killer deal for a custom made vase. I'd love to know what other people think, but it's not like you're pricing them separately to sell as, um, products or gifts on the website. You're always selling them with flowers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm encouraged. I think it's really great that you've found this way to keep it hyper local. You're using, you're, you're going to this floor, this collective pottery studio in your own community. And, um, how are you squeezing that into your time before we wrap up? I'm just curious, how do you balance that all with running Foxbound flowers? Uh, That part is really hard. I've been trying to get back in the pottery studio since Valentine's day and been having a hard time (laughs) finding a way to get in there. So it is, it is really tough. And when I do get in there, I have to make the best of my time and try to crank out a bunch of stuff all at once because I'm, I'm not in there as often as I would like. So, yeah. Well, listen, this has been great. I want to ask one question from uh, Debbie Middleman of Me Viva Designs, which um, is a great question, which is, do you rent your vases for events? Because that could be another channel of revenue for you to like to rent to other florists. Sure. I have not considered doing that yet because I haven't had a, I haven't had a quantity on hand where I could do that yet. They, I've been selling them as literally as fast as I can make them. And wow. so I, I don't have a collection to rent yet. Unless I can spend more time get in the Potter studio. More. Unless you can clone yourself. I yeah. love it. Oh, I will. I, since I've seen these faces in person and just the tactile nature and actually the, the imperfection is what makes them so unique. Kelsey, don't be hard on yourself. It's like, um, we don't want cookie cutter things. We want that unique 
you know, hand of the artist. So um, I, I think it's, it's inspiring. Um, we'll have time at the end for a few questions. So if you have any more questions for Kelsey, pop them into the chat and I'm going to go ahead and thank you so much for joining yeah, thank us. You. And, and I'll invite Holly and Anna and Holly Lukasevich is the owner of district two florals floral studio in um, Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, Holly. Hi. Hello, everyone. So it's amazing great. to be here today. It's great to have you here. And you have a special guest who is your pottery collaborator. Yeah. Um, Anna Stoisich. Hi. Yeah. Why don't you talk a little bit about your, your business and how you work together? I know you have a few slides you're going to share too. Yeah. So let me go ahead and pull up um, some visuals to share with everybody. And, and we'll kind of go through them quickly. That way we can talk a little bit more like uh, yeah. freely and openly. Okay. Oh, this is great. Is that showing up okay? Yeah, that looks awesome. And what a great photo of the two of you. Okay. So this was from our um, first collaboration that we did together. It was um, Anna was having some of her work in a local art gallery and um, so we had kind of reached out about being able to use um, a lot of local flowers in one of the vases that she created. Um, uh, and I'll, we'll get to a couple more photos of that real quick. But um, this is just a little bit about um, my work in floral design as District 2 Floral Studio. Um, I call myself a sustainable Midwest florist um, with values rooted in the slow flowering practices. Um, the Slow Flower Society has been so um, instrumental in my growth and my like learning and knowledge. And so I'm just so, so grateful that, um, that it, this community exist, exists. Anna, do you want to share a little bit about your work? Sure. So I am uh, a painter and a ceramic artist, and I live in Southwest Iowa. So just across the river from Holly in Omaha. And I do a couple different types of work in ceramics, um, mostly electric fired ceramic work, which is featured here in that photo. It's more colorful. And then I also do a body of work that's in a wood kiln and that creates more kind of rustic, organic, neutral looking aesthetic. Um, and Anna and I met, you know, many years ago at a, a yoga class, but then kind of reconnected um, maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. if that. And um, I think just our aesthetics were very similar in our value systems um, in working with the land and working with um, local and seasonal as much as possible. Um, so it was really exciting to be able to kind of like start having those conversations about what it might look like for us to um, start working together. Um, and so this is um, the, the first example of um, these vases that Anna had created inspired by the Venus of Wellendorf. Um, and I don't know if you want to share anything more about these that. These are amazing, you guys. Wow. Love the torso. Those were fired in a wood kiln and they're about 18 inches tall. Um, so they're a pretty good size. And Holly actually had come over to my studio and saw these faces. And I, this was like when we reconnected with each other and I said, gosh, if you ever want to collaborate, these faces will be yours to <laughs> do your magic with it. So we had a great opportunity come up with Moonrise Art Gallery in Elkhorn, Nebraska, where they wanted to feature both of our work like that together. And they're also very much, um, you know, they like to feature local artists and uh, prairie natural landscapes, things like that. And it was in July. So, you know, in the Met the Midwest here, um, that would be like prime time for local flowers. And so super special to be able to have this sort of like blossoming, blooming um, feminine figure mm. um, because, you know, there's just so much kind of um, wrapped up in that visual imagery. I think mm. that, um, so that was the, one of our first collaborations. Um, this winter locally, there's a, 
a large flower festival that happens each year um, in one of the churches here, the cathedral. So they um, pull in all these different local flower designers to create um, installations all around the church. Um, and so this one, um, I used um, Anna's pottery pieces, probably six of them, um, to hold um, a fair amount of the, the flowers and grasses that are displayed as part of the installation. And because now we're um, in Midwest winter, um, I was really proud that all of, all of the foliage and flowers that were used were local. So either they were dried, um, we, there is the flower farmer here who is growing bulbs. So the amaryllis featured are from a local flower farmer. Um, everything except for the clementines and kumquats were grown locally. <laughs> um, but this, you can see one of the vases um, from Anna's that was used. Um, here's another part of the installation. And those are little bud vases. Oh, how There's wonderful. I see those. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is another. And actually the the little arrangement that is behind Anna and I right now is created in this vase right here on the screen. I love that vase with the handles. Mm -hmm. okay. And then um, future forward, um, Anna and I are, oops, the screen kind of, for, okay, here we go. Um, we're working together um, I, to, um, Anna's creating vases, kind of like Kelsey's doing, I suppose, in, in a sense, but um, some cylindrical, really clean, elegant um, vases that will be used for uh, weddings this summer and autumn. And so they'll be customized um, with the couple's name and the date of their wedding. And then on the bottom, it will have Anna's contact information as well as my information. So, and I'm, I'm offering this as part of their wedding package um, right now, just because I want them to be able to have like a, a special keepsake of, of that work, because um, a lot of the, the couples I work with are very intentional and in wanting to support local and uh, just sustainable value system. So um, yeah, well, that's kind of what we're working on for the future here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stop share so we can talk a little bit more freely. Oh my gosh, this is so inspiring. Um, I love the intentionality of two artists who really feed off of each other and kind of you realize that you both have the same, um, you know, values for how you are in community, but you're true to your own aesthetic, but they're so complimentary. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Well, like, you know, I know like Kelsey was saying earlier of like finding that right price point for custom vases. Um, and that's something that like Anna and I have been working out too of like, I think what I've have been thinking about is like tying in extra, a little bit of extra fees here and there to cover the cost of the vase mm -hmm. as you would for, for offering any other service that you would with florals. Um, that way, you know, Anna can be paid for her time and skill set, and um, right, yeah, right. For these on the wedding package, though, is that like almost like a line item that this is a this is a a, a, a kind of an add on that the cust the clients are selecting, so they know they're getting these these keepsake vases. Well, and that's a good question of like me. And we did talk about that too, of like, maybe that's something that I offer them. Um, but I also like want them to have Anna's pottery. <laughs> so I like also want them to like, just receive it, you know, with, yeah. with the, the bridal bouquet in it Got as it. like, that's the special thing that they then get to keep um, as kind of like a gift. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I love that. And um, also you just need a few of these weddings that you have photography photography from and then that becomes a, you know something you can both share on your websites and it, it'll just take off because it'll become something that is unique to both of you mm -hmm. that's the hope yeah yeah oh, 
I love, thank you, Holly. You're donating one of Anna's uh, vases uh, for our giveaway. So yeah. it's from her pra- flower, prairie flower ceramic collection. Yeah. Uh, thank this- you so much. I'm excited. I checked it out and uh, I it will look. It will look similar, similar to this, but have a different prairie um, flower step on it. Oh, gorgeous. All righty. And we all might be ordering online anyway. So, <laughs> For sure. Great. Andy Ziegler owns three sepals, which is really, you're both a florist and a potter, um, as I understand it, right? Guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Introduce us to three sepals. We can tell you're in a pottery studio. I am so in my cool. pottery studio. Um, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a realtor by trade. That is my, that pays the bills, which allows me to have some free time to do other things. Um, and I, we have a half an acre in, um, in Portland, Oregon. And, uh, I've been doing, I'm a, I'm an art major. So, um, I've been doing, you know, I'm just, just a maker across the board. Um, I've been doing pottery for about five years now. Um, and we were, we've just been growing food for the most part on our property for ourselves. And then, um, during, we have a really big front yard that's full sun and was just sort of dead grass. And I had a lot of guilt around planting and using those resources for flowers and then uh, when COVID hit, I was like, you know what? The whole neighborhood needs a giant bouquet. So we're just going to plant the whole front yard as a giant bouquet. Um, and I started giving, just giving flowers away. So on Saturdays we put, um, during the growing season, we just have a stand in front of the house and we just gift market bouquets to our to our neighbors. Um, and, you know, I, it's like just kind of growing. And now I, I, on average, it's somewhere between 25 and 35 bouquets a week. Um, and I haven't quite wrapped my head around how, or if I want to focus on like income from that. Cause mm. I, I just don't want the pressure of that to kill the joy of gardening for me. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm just sort of, you know, my focus is more on, on, on the pottery part of it. And, you know, the flowers just kind of come for free. Um, so I, I also started looking at, at vases and like, as I was gifting these bouquets to clients and, and just fellow realtors and and people in my community that it is, there are not a lot of good options out there for buying vases in bulk. And, um, they don't necessarily hold the flowers in the way that I wanted them to hold the flowers. Uh, I really wanted I really wanted something that replicated what it looks like when you're holding the bouquet in your hands mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. keeping the flowers in that like handheld cluster that then falls open at the top of your hand. And that mm-hmm. is like I, literally impossible to find. And so I just started making them. Um, so this is, these are hand built. Okay. Um, this is one that we use the photo from your website on our social media Oh, yeah. it's so nice to see you hold it. Cause I'm getting a sense of the scale. So this one is okay. about 19 inches. Okay. They're very big. And the other thing that I noticed in, I grow a lot of, um, tasseled amaranth. Um, mm-hmm. and in the first year that I was growing those, I realized that there are no vases intended to hold them. And if it is a tall vase and you put a tall flower in it, it's just going to tip right over. And so I was like dropping rocks into the bottom of vases and putting bricks in this, like trying to figure out how to display these big dangly bouquets that weren't going to tip over. So I was like, oh, I can hand build these and give them a heavy bottom. So they're, they're pretty thin at the top, pretty delicate. And then the bottom is, is weighted. So you can, I mean, you can do like just a really massive. That's amazing. And you're right. Those are so hard to arrange with. Um, so hard. It, and so hard. The and narrow so, neck also holds them upright, right? Yeah. So it it I used my hand. I was like, "How will this look when I hold a bouquet?" That's so brilliant. Intended to replicate holding the bouquet, and then these petals just, um, you know, let it fall open. So without, creative. Without going like all the way open. Um, so those are my hand built ones. These are super labor intensive. It's like not an easy. Uh, I usually take over the dining room table and make like a few at a time because my studio space is really set up for throwing. Um, so I also do hand thrown or like on the wheel 
these are all, all the ones behind me, besides the white ones are wheel thrown. Um, I love the glaze. Thing, just like a little bit of a gather spot and then fall open. Um, I just dropped like a hundred pieces off at the kiln and I had hoped to have them back for this, but I don't. So, um, but they're going to be similar to this size or similar to this shape, but they're taller. They're mm -hmm. like um, maybe 10 to 14 inches tall um, and a little bit smaller gathering. This is, this series is this aqua gemstone color. Um, and then there's the next batch that's at the kiln right now is, um, maybe I can show you that we like. There'll be more this color, mm, more of a moss, sort of. moss sage color. Yeah. I also found that I'm sure that other florists agree with this, that, um, it, if a lot of vases are like bright colors or lots of colors. And then when you put, they, they totally distract from the flowers. Mm -hmm. So I, I was just like aesthetically flowers. I feel like look best in earth tones, yeah. neutrals greens, things that like replicate the color that they're already in. And then obviously the aqua gemstone, just cause it's like, you know, a wonderful color. <laughs> um, yes. It's, it's that it, there's, there's definitely kind of that nod to foliage and mm -hmm. what a foliage palette would be. What is your, um, market for selling the pottery? I'm just curious, are you selling those online or through other, like to other, through other retail shops or I just made a website actually. Okay. Um, and I, I just got to the point where I was like running out of room on my shelves and like realizing that I actually do need to part with all of these because it's <laughs> like, I have, I don't know, probably 300 vases now, which I, I do not need. So right, need I'm going to call speak. you when I come to Portland and have a little <laughs> private shopping spree. <laughs> Anytime. Um, yeah. So I, it, like I am, it is an offer to my fellow um, realtors to buy vases from me with bouquets as closing gifts for their clients. So that oh, is, that's one way that I'm doing lovely. it. Um, I would love to like have a connection with a florist and do like small batch, like, you know, 20, 20 pieces or, you know, like the thing about throwing them on the wheel, once you have a shape that is, that feels good and holds the flowers in the way that somebody wants to have them held, it's not, it's not hard to just replicate that. Like I'm not a production potter, so they wouldn't be exactly the same, but basic size and shape and glazing could be cohesive amongst a set. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to be a production potter. I like, I, oh, I just like making what I want to make. <laughs> And one of our uh, attendees is just commenting about what a uh, so smart to partner or offer this to realtors, because that's something that, you know, most people give a bottle of wine or something and and you're making it, giving them an opportunity to really highlight uh, a local artist and local flowers. Yeah. And that's lovely. And that's your niche. Like you're the realtor potter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to hear your story. I think we're all going to come over to your website and see, since you have a new website, you have a, you have some of the these styles on the website for sale. I have some pictures on there. I have, when this batch, um, I have a, a fan, friend who's a, an amazing photographer and she is coming over at the end of the month to do like a proper shoot so that I can have like actual purchase now buttons on there right now. It's just like inquire and, okay. and I'll send you um, what I have. Um, because I don't know how to use the internet well enough to make a website. So I have somebody younger than me coming to yeah. help those purchases. Well, I look forward to, to highlighting that. I'm really inspired to do a whole story about all of the potters and florists who are on this, um, zoom call so we can see more photography and get a little, dig a little deeper than the you know, little 10 minutes we're allocating to everyone. So, uh, Andy, it's so great to meet you and so fun to see, um, what, what's behind you and what your hands have created. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And Sarah, uh, Nayani, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. how you say it? Perfect. Nayani. Yes. <laughs> Nayani of Grow Girl Seattle is, um, going to, she's got a few slides to share with us. So, um, tell us a little bit about Grow Girl Seattle and, and how did you get involved with, uh, your friend, uh, Jury, who is, um, Jury Hong of Rio by Jury is the potter, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, I started growing flowers in 2020, like many people and just ha filled my whole house and sidewalk and driveway with garden beds. 
and I started selling them locally um, and then started adding in flowers from other local growers um, and just have met so many cool people through doing this. And during that, I followed this potter jury and I'll just show you a few things that really got me like interested in her work. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yes, we can. Okay, great. And you're, um, and let me interrupt. You're on Bainbridge Island, right? Um, I'm just in Ballard. In oh, you're Seattle. in Ballard. Okay. Yeah. And is she, is she local to you? Yes. Yeah, she lives near Sandpoint. Um, okay. So yeah. So and for non-Seattleites, that's just a, a, a popular in-city neighborhood. So I'm, of course, I'm wanting to know how close that is to me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> totally. I'll you, no, I'll no, I love it. <laughs> So um, I just followed her on Instagram and she made things like this beautiful. This is a um, hand-built stoneware fruit basket bowl. And these are some of her candle holders. And I just really love her aesthetic. It really aligned with the kind of, um, I don't know, just beautiful natural look. These are some mugs that she makes and then um, some plates and, and other things. This is a fruit bowl. But I just reached out to her on Instagram. We were Instagram friends first. And I said, Jury, would you make me some vases? I love your aesthetic. Just anything that you want. I want it to be like artful and inspired by nature. And so um, she came up with these tree trunk vases, which oh, are wow. so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I love them. I- I feel so lucky that, you know, I got to work with her on this and, and I think it's kind of cool because flowers to me do actually look like a tree, you know, sort of a tree coming out of a tree trunk of the vase at times. And so I really loved the concept she came up with. And this was my very first year of like floristry. This was 2021. So these designs aren't my total aesthetic right now, but we did like a flash sale where we had like a limited batch that she made and we sold, um, the flowers. So these were the photos we used for like the email blast. Um, and then here's another one, if I can switch, uh, this sort of like red concept. And we were using all local flowers from Seattle wholesale growers market and a few like hellebores and things from my garden. Um, And then once we sold them, these were some of the creations that I made. That was about a month later. So there were more flowers available. Um, And I started to kind of get the movement a little bit more at this point. It's kind of fun to look back on old work and just see (laughs) how much it's changed. But I got more comfortable working with the shape. And I really liked using the jasmine to create some movement. Mm, Love it. Um, and there's just one more. And then um, she also created these are water drop vases over on the right hand side. Um, and then her little bear vases that she made <laughs> as well. And the reason I was a little late this morning is I just went out and snipped some hellebores and made, took these photos because I forgot to show her other vases. Um, so oh, I cute. just wanted to show these. And then um, this is the water drop vase that I haven't completely done a sale on yet. I have a few more of these, but um, that's one of the ones we can give away if you'd like to. Oh, Sarah, that's great. Wow. So, yeah. And I'll just add, you know, for me, it was really special to meet someone else local that was a creative because I switched careers to pursue flowers. And, you know, at the time I didn't know a lot of people yet. And so one of the best outcomes for me is become, is becoming friends with jury and my, our husbands love each other. You know, they just had a baby. So now, you know, we just recently got to go over and meet their baby Alice. And so it's been really fun getting to know like another local creative and kind of work off each other. Um, and then this summer she's building candle holders. Cause now I'm doing more like weddings and events. And so she's building all the candle holders for a lot of my weddings that are coming up, which will be fun. Wow. Sarah, I'm so impressed. I love it. This teardrop base is really cute. And thank you so much for donating one of those for the giveaways. Um, I think I saw the, um, the little, um, small candle holders in one of your earlier slides. It's like (laughs) a, a small footed disc, right. That, that you'll have what in your inventory and you'll just rent them to for events. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do is exactly like you said, I have um, some of her pebble ones that are round, I'm going to get some of those and then some of the flat footed ones with the little lip. And so I'll buy those um, from her and then just have that as my inventory um, for 
clients to use if they'd like to add that onto their floral package. Okay. So that's good because a nice segue to a question we have from uh, Jennifer Couvant about pricing for your collaboration. Are you <clears throat> buying direct from jury and then <clears throat> um, paying her and then she's done? Or are you sharing, doing like a revenue share or how do you structure that? If you don't mind sharing that? Oh yeah, sure. At first I just did it as a direct purchase from jury. So the first two sets that we did, the tree trunk and the water chop vase, um, and, I think now we know each other, we work together, we're friends, we would probably do some sort of like split or something. But what I did is I just priced it at her retail price of what she would price it for, and then just added my normal price for that size of arrangement. So it was certainly more expensive than if you just get a normal vase that I might pick up somewhere else. But people were really excited about the local artist aspect of it. And they sold out really quickly, even though I was a new designer and I still have customers that when I was posting about the slow flowers meetup that were messaging me and saying, oh, I have one of Jerry's vases. I use it every day. I love it. And so it just makes me really happy that it's an ongoing thing that people put on their shelves in a different way than they would like another flower delivery. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, when I was putting this meeting together, I reached out to um, some longtime Slow Flowers members who have a retail flower shop and they had done a collaboration with a local potter before COVID. Um, they basically came up with a, they gave me permission to share this with you all. They came up with a design that was unique and um, kind of a two-piece vase with a lid. And they went to a local potter and commissioned it and asked the potter to Ooh. make them a limited edition. And then they sold them in their shop. And then something kind of crummy happened. And they saw that the potter was selling those vases on her site um, as, as if she had designed it. And it was just an awkward situation. And our, our members said to me, we know we, we didn't handle this well. And we know that we were a little bit green in terms of establishing good communication to, um, uh, you know, determine who owns this design. And so they asked me, they told me I could share that with everyone. And their advice is just get, if you're going to do a collaboration, that's truly like a unique new product, get it all spelled out. So it can be maybe, as you were saying, a revenue share in this case, you, you kind of gave jury the assignment to create something unique for you. And you were, you were able to purchase from her, her at wholesale. And then you, you were able to basically price those at retail. Is that what happened? Yeah, that's right. And, and so basically we didn't do it exclusive. So obviously, you know, she can sell more tree trunk faces separate from any collaboration. I just was excited about working with a local artist and then also being inspired by whatever it is that she came up with. I just find, especially with artists and I'm sure other florists on the phone can agree when people give you license, maybe a color palette or something, but you kind of get to create in your style. I think it comes out the best. And so yeah. I was really excited about that, but yes, it was at a retail price and I bought it from her wholesale. Yeah. That's good feedback. Okay. Um, so fabulous to meet you, Sarah, finally. And yeah, thank uh, you. So much. I am hoping that I get on your mailing list so I can find out about these pop-up sales. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and let's get Katie back on and let's make this work. Katie. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Yay. I'm so sorry. Thank you for your patience. Um, we're trying to make this work. So thank you. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you. And Katie, um, please just introduce Seed on Hudson and talk about your new foray into pottery. Yeah, no, it's um, so I have a business called Seed on Hudson and I am a flower farmer um, in Hastings on Hudson, which is about 30 minutes north of Manhattan. Um, I come from a 25 year corporate um, art auction background. So I did a transition during 2020 and went into um, complete full-time growing and have a homegrown nursery and then moved into cut flower um, farming and sales last year. So ceramics is something I did in my previous life. I did my, threw my first pot in 1990 and came back to it. Um, it's about 18 years since I've thrown on the wheel and I'm kind of coming back to all the things I loved years ago um, and really passionate about um, creating. And I wanted to, create vessels that I could pair with my flowers. Um, and I love the sustainability of it. I love the fact that 
you know, you can gift them, you can keep them and cherish them, or you can break them down and reuse them. Um, I just, yeah, everything about it, I really love. And it's just another creative outlet for me to, to kind of go into. And I work, I don't have a home studio per se. This is my, you know, I'm just dabbling back into it, but I have a, a studio down the road that I, I throw at a couple hours a week and I'm just starting off um, and hopefully we'll offer some for sale alongside my flowers this year. So similar to what Kelsey said, she in, found a, um, a studio that you, you what, rent by the hour or something like that, or you, you yeah, are exactly. able to use it when you need it. Exactly. Yeah. And so are you throwing on the wheel or are you doing hand? Built? I am. I'm doing both. Um, mm -hmm. I'm throwing. So this is a, a thrown piece. Oh my gosh. That's beautiful. Um, that would be sort of a short centerpiece. I'm also doing hand building. Um, I went to, I was, I'm from Los Angeles originally. So I'm a Californian, um, born and raised, but I was back visiting my family for the holidays. And there's this incredible um, Scandinavian design exhibition at the LA County Museum. And I was walking through and I got really inspired by all the rattan, all the like um, caneware chairs. And I love texture and I love um, form. And so I, I literally stole one of my husband's chairs and I took it apart. <laughs> um, and so this is like one of my newer pieces that I'm working on. That's like, um, it's a hand built piece, oh, but my using, goodness. using other materials or replicating. I, I just love mixing medium with ceramics. So something that doesn't look like ceramic, but is like another material. I like kind of playing. It's like surface like design almost the way you, you've pressed that into the, the clay into the rattan. Yeah, it still has its former in it. So sorry, it's not, it's not um, fired or glazed yet, but I'm focusing in my previous life. I did a lot of like Raku and I did a lot of like color and now I'm focusing more on form and texture. So primarily using like a white, a white glaze. Mm. Also, like my that should Hold that one up again. That's, is that um, hand built? This is thrown too. Oh, it is. And, and then, carved. and then you carved it to create that pattern. Yeah. Right. And wow. these are some of my pansies. We don't have a lot growing yet in New York. So just the pansies in my tunnel and some hellebores that have started um, popping up in a little eucalyptus that tends to do well in the tunnel. Um, well, I love yeah. that you're, I'm love that you're bringing back um, a, something that had been on the back shelf for so long in your professional life. And now it's integrating so perfectly into the plants that you're growing and the bouquets you're selling. Yeah, it's really fun. And I'm, I'm trying out other things too, like making flower frogs, um, just experimenting with different things. So, you know, something to put in, um, you know, everything yeah. floral related I'm trying out right now and just experimenting. So it's, it's early days, but um, having a lot of fun. But Katie, you have a, um, a CSA, right? I do. I'm offering okay. one this year. So, so the um, vases so could, could be a natural extension of that. Exactly. Yeah. I'm still working through sort of how I'm going to launch that, but that will be coming up soon. I love it. Well, I'm excited to see where this takes you. And um, I know you're just at the front end of um, getting this launched. And I'm so glad you joined in because it shows everyone that it, jump in. If you have access, if you're interested and you have access to um, a wheel or a, a pottery studio, maybe you want to do the hand-built direction this is a, a way to differentiate yourself. I mean, what other, what were you doing for vases prior to this? I guess that's, that begs the question. Yeah. Just your standard glass vases, um, different kinds of bottle forms. Mm -hmm. Um, I use a lot, so I'll use gem jars. I'll use, you know, formal glassware. I try and, um, reuse as much as I can. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was glass predominantly. I'll put all the, all of our makers on the screen and we'll just uh, maybe have a, a few rounds of questions. A few comments that came through, I think I'll just throw out and see if there's um, a suggestion or comments or reactions from our creatives. Um, Amber Flack from Little Acre Flowers said, we collaborated with a local potter a few years ago on a small batch run of custom made vases. We had her put a stamp on them with our logo to distinguish them maybe just another suggestion if you're going the custom made route. And that kind of sounds like what um, uh, you guys, Holly and Anna were doing with the wedding one. So what do you, you said you're putting information on the bottom of the basis. It's stamped. Uh, it will be scraffitoed. So I do a technique where I'm using a red clay body with a white slip that goes over the red clay body and then scratching through that. And it'll, it'll say your, your studio information and district two floral. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. That's great. That's, that makes sense. I did see a note from Debbie, um, from, um, uh, Debbie Middleman saying, um, she has done direct purchase for a commissioned order. Uh, I, I'm assuming direct purchase from a potter and then use those vases in workshops or sold them as part of arrangements. So she's kind of acquired an inventory and then either kept them in her inventory for events or sold them as, you know, kind of the way Sarah's doing like a, a va- bouquet plus face. So that's great. Um, Andy, how about you? Anything else that you want to add? Uh, yeah, I would, I, I, there was a question in there about um, taking commissions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I, uh, that is interesting to me. Like I would be interested in a collaboration. I still, like I said earlier, don't fully want to wrap my head around running a business of flowers and vases yet in maybe in my next lifetime, but, um, definitely collaborating on, on, on vases with other florists is of interest to me. Yeah. I love it for your point of entry was, um, creating something to hold the flowers you were giving away. (laughs) So you're like the accidental entrepreneur. (laughs) Pretty much. I mean, I already have a job. So I was like, I don't really need another job, but I like, I can't stop myself from making and I can't keep it all. Ah, I love it. I love it. Um, Okay. Well, this has been so much fun. Um, I, I really am. I'm just so glad that we got all the talented folks on the screen to really share what they've, um, what they've done with their flowers and their pottery. And I thank you all so much, especially uh, for taking the time to join us on camera, showing us your pottery, um, showing us your flowers and talking about your collaborations. Um, I I think this is something that is going to inspire a lot of people to pursue their own relationships and their own, either their own work, like Katie, picking up the potter's wheel again, or finding someone the way um, some of our florists have um, to, you know, the way Holly has um, partnered with Anna, the way that Sarah has partnered with Jury. I think it's really, um, it does, it's like a marriage. I mean, in in terms of finding someone you can collaborate with. So I I hope it's positive for all of you. And um, I want to just end by mentioning a couple of things. We actually have um, our Slow Flowers Summit coming up on June 26th and 27th at the Bellevue Botanical Garden. And and when I started promoting this slow pottery uh, workshop, the director of the Bellevue Botanical Garden emailed me and said he's involved with a local pottery studio just like a few blocks away from the Botanical Garden. And he said that they would be happy to make vessels for our presenters to use in their presentation. So I'm excited. I mean, I'm going to have to try to follow up on that and see um, if if these local artists want to do that, but won't that be fun? It's sort of inspired by the the topic here. So I, if you're, if you've signed up, we'll see you at the summit. Uh, We're going to start doing some more um, promotion for registration uh, with a few uh, special promo codes coming up uh, at the end of March. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I'm, I'm really thrilled that we'll, we'll um, have this collaboration between flower farmers, floral designers, and creatives um, throughout the whole summit. And this is, I'm really inspired by today because I think it's going to help me think in a new way. Honestly, the ve- the vessels that have been used have always been an afterthought. And um, now I'm feeling a little uh, inspired. Oh, I'm definitely inspired to do something differently and just see that this is an opportunity to telegraph sustainability and talk about uh, artisan, um, local and sustainable work. And um, it's just, I think it, it delights, it makes the flowers elevated when we do that. So we will see you all next month um, in April. Our, our meetup will be on uh, Friday, April 14th. Um, I don't have the topic 100% ready to go, but I think it will be three experts on a panel similar to what we did today so we can start hearing from more people. Um, but if any of you have any ideas um, or suggestions, please reach out, shoot me a note, Deborah at slowflowers.com, and we will... Um, we were looking for ideas. So uh, otherwise this video, the video replay of this will be shared probably next week. And I know that we had a ton of people sign up who couldn't make it. So there'll be pe- people waiting to get that video. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. Um, we're almost to spring folks. So I'm sure you're as excited as I am. Thank you so much. And thank you to our speakers, um, Kelsey, Katie, Holly, Anna, Andy, and Sarah. you we're so generous with your time and expertise and your beauty. And um, I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. you. Bye-bye.
Thank you. Well, good morning. Hey, thanks so much. That was wonderful. And I really loved that session. You can watch the replay video of today's episode at slowflowerspodcast.com for episode 603. I'll also share the links and more details about each guest in the show notes. Here's to artisan pottery for artisan flowers. Before we go, I'd like to thank our sponsors whose financial support brings the Slowflower Show to you. This show is brought to you by slowflowers.com, the free online directory to more than 850 florist shops and studios who design with local, seasonal, and sustainable flowers, and to the farms that grow those blooms. It's the conscious choice for buying and sending flowers. And thank you to our lead sponsor, Farm Girl Flowers. Farm Girl Flowers delivers iconic burlap wrap bouquets and lush, abundant arrangements to customers across the U.S., supporting U.S. flower farms by purchasing more than $10 million of U.S. grown, fresh and seasonal flowers and foliage annually. Discover more at farmgrowflowers.com. Thank you to the Gardener's Workshop, which offers a full curriculum of online education for flower farmers and farmer florists. Online education is more important than ever, and you'll want to check out the course offerings at thegardenersworkshop.com. Thank you to Details Flower Software, a platform specifically designed to help florists and designers do more and earn more. With an elegant and easy to use system, Details improves profitability, productivity, and organization for floral businesses of all shapes and sizes. You can grow your bottom line through professional proposals and confident pricing with their all-in-one platform. All friends of the Slow Flowers Show will receive a seven-day free trial at detailsflowers.com. And thank you to Cal Flowers, the leading floral trade association in California, providing valuable transportation and other benefits to flower growers and the entire floral supply chain in California and 48 other states. The association is a leader in bringing fresh cut flowers to the U.S. market and in promoting the benefits of flowers to new generations of American consumers. Learn more at CAFGS.org. The Slow Flower Show is a member-supported endeavor, and I value our loyal members and supporters. If you're new to our weekly show and our long-running podcast, check out all of our resources at slowflowersociety.com. I'm Deborah Prinzing, host and producer of The Slow Flower Show and The Slow Flowers Podcast. Next week, you're invited to join me in putting more slow flowers on the table, one stem, one vase at a time. The content and opinions expressed here are either mine alone or those of my guests alone, independent of any podcast sponsor or other person, company, or organization. Thanks so much for joining us today, and I'll see you 